Happy? Go. Hey, hey. Are we recording? We're recording. We're so recording. awesome. You like literally just want me to go with it right now. Go with it. All right. So <laughs> innovate, uh, communicate and educate. And this is the chat series, right? That's right. Ice eight. And, and I think today's emphasis is going to be on the communicate. I, I, I mean, you know, when you're talking about engagement, we're talking about communicating. And and it was interesting the way you were to pa pass it on to me, like I'll hand it to Dave, implying that I'm going to give a presentation. I'm not. This is this is I'm going to yammer for a little bit because I can I can yammer. Jay knows that we've known each other long enough to know that yep. I can yammer on for quite some time. And um, I, but I, I would love to introduce a concept and then get everybody talking. If um uh, if you don't mind, uh, I I met Kelly. Kelly's with High Road. She's in the HR for High Road. Um, uh, we all know Jay Fereshta. Fereshta. Uh, yep. I'll is, put my video on. I yeah. Who, where are you from? What, what 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 organization are you with? I'm with NIGP. It's the Institute for Public Procurement. We're in Herndon, Virginia. I've been with the organization a little over two years. And uh, we've been doing a lot as an organization. So what we do is we've got over 16,000 um, state and local public pro procurement professionals who are our core members. We also have um, roughly 1,000 folks in the private sector who are suppliers who want to sell to our members. And so our members, they procure anything from, um, you know, number two pencils for any particular school district to, you know, high powered equipment uh, like drones and uh, police vehicles and everything in between and construction equipment. So we run the gamut um, and I'm new to um, nonprofit and association. Uh, most of my career was spent in the public sector working at a startup, working at big Fortune 100 companies. And so it's been quite a change of pace for me, but we've been doing a whole lot of stuff as an organization, obviously given the challenges that all of us are facing, growth and engagement are, are big pillars for us. That's how we really see us um, being continuing to be relevant to our members. Yeah. So I'm very happy to be here and meeting all you fine folks. Th this is so nice, Jay. You don't do this very often. I'm going to come back to a uh, this as an analogy to the way we're engaging members. I say we. I'm a vendor, but still, like, this is we. I consider myself an association professional. Um, but this is the way we engage members uh, or no, this is not generally the way we engage members. We engage members in this analogy of like a webinar, but we're going to get to that in a second. I'm, I'm going to write that down. Webinar versus chat. Um, and so let's, I want to talk about that in a second. I'll forget if I don't write it down. And one more question for you. What, uh, what, what role do you have over there? What do you do? I'm the director of marketing and communications. Ah, uh, perfect. Okay. You're exactly the kind of person I'm hoping to have in here because you, you're going to come to the table with this really having to understand uh, or, or with a good understanding of how associations, even though you're new to the space, are communicating and how it's different from how you might communicate in industry. So we're going to talk yep. about that too. Um, Jamie, are you, can you jump on the line for a second? Yeah, here I am. Hi, Jamie. So Hi, how's tell going? me, Good. Tell me a little about you. Who are you with and mm -hmm. stuff? So um, I am, unlike first, I'm, I am a, a veteran association person. I've been working in association, nonprofit associations for most of my career. Um, I'm currently unattached. Um, um, I, um, I am one of the uh, uh, COVID, COVID related uh, layoffs. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. from, from 2020. And so what's I, your niche? I, Maybe we can help you find something. No, that'd be awesome. So, um, my niche is membership, um, and professional development. And I'm really looking my next role for my next role. I'm really looking to find a job where I can, uh, leverage my skills, building, building membership strategy and value, um, in the areas of professional development and, um, diversity, equity, and inclusion, leadership development programs, so on and so forth. So, that's who I am. Where you, where you, not that it matters much, but where yeah. do you live now? I'm, I'm in the D.C. area, okay. um, and I was most recently with the Society for Neuroscience, but 
Um, my experience really spans a lot of different industries as well as trade associations versus professional societies. Um, I've, I've worked in both, um, somewhat of a generalist in that space, but in that, in that aspect, uh, which I think is an asset because I think the commonality uh, with all of my career experience has been, um, you know, the ability to really understand the industries that I'm working within, understand the challenges and the needs. Um, and use that knowledge to build value and assets for the organization. Cool. Well, I, Jamie, do you ever look at the ASAE Collaborate? Um, you know, the the uh, or maybe it's Association Now. It's not Collaborate. Association Now at the bottom. They always have job postings. Do you see those? Oh, yep. Of course. They're really good. Like I look in there, and I never want to work for somebody. But if I ever had to, <laughs> those are pretty cool jobs. Absolutely. Now I'm a. I'm a, an avid reader of Associations Now and contributor to Associations Now um, magazine and or newsletter at this point. And, um, and, and a CAE too. I'm, Good. And a CAE and I'm actively interviewing. So. Well, uh, listen, send me an email, dave at propfuel.com. Uh, I always like making those connections for people. Sure. And I right off the bat, I can, uh, I'll, I'll send a couple emails. I can think of two. One, both actively looking for people in membership slash marketing slash analysis. So I don't know if it's a Perfect. fit, but we'll find, we'll, we'll, we'll try. Hey, Cindy, what, what's your, what's your deal? Oh, not Siri. My computer just popped up. Hey, Siri. <laughs> now go away. Go back to bed, Siri. Uh, All right. Hey, Hi, Cindy. Hey, hey, Jay. Nice to see everyone. Uh, Hello. Uh, so I work for the National Society for Histotechnology. I'm in charge of membership. I've been here for a little over a year and uh, I'm enjoying it. Uh, there's been quite a bit uh, that we've implemented this past year, a new database. We launched a new membership model. We changed Which, which database? Uh, we went from uh, NetForm to ClearVantage, uh, uh, Euclid's ClearVantage. And so yep. um, we're still working through a few things, but pretty much it's going fine. Uh, then we also switched over from a calendar year membership to an anniversary uh, membership. So that's a great boon for us because, you know, people that tend to join the second half of the year don't tend to necessarily renew because they didn't get a full year's worth of membership already. So, and a lot of them join because of our convention, which is generally held in September, or October this past year, it was virtual like everybody else. Um, but those so high people, churn then. Yes, exactly. High churn, especially. Uh, yeah, they join for the conference and then they leave because they're not getting anything out of it. But then they join for the conference if they go again and then they leave, they're not getting anything. We'll talk about that too. Exactly. Got a lot to talk about. Yeah, so that, you know, so trying to um, increase renewals because our segment uh, took a hit because of COVID, a lot of elected surgeries were put on hold. And so a lot of our members were either laid off or furloughed or reassigned uh, to other duties uh, at reduced hours. So, you know, we've lost uh, people um, because of COVID and we've noticed uh, new member joins and uh, rejoins, people that lapsed and come back are lower than they have been historically in the past. So. I've uh, got my work cut out for me, but it's fine. It's all good. So I'm happy to be here and learning uh, from everyone. And Cindy, yeah, I think you should say, uh, you should tell everyone where you are geographically since you're not in DC or Columbus. Oh, that's true. So um, our association is completely virtual. Actually, I'm with uh, Jay on the virtual association network. We'll be chatting in another hour or so. We have a call. Uh, so I am actually based down uh, right outside of Myrtle Beach in South Carolina. Mm. So, uh, we didn't get all the snow that everyone else had. Uh, thank goodness, because it would paralyze us down here. Uh, yes. But it is sunny, uh, but uh, a little chilly. So looking forward to a little bit warmer weather. So. Yeah, we didn't get any snow either. We just got rain. I live on the coast by, in Boston. All around us, you know, oh. generally in the coast, we get a little bit less. What did you say? National Society for what Hist technology? For hist histo technology. Histo? So, hi histo, H I S T O technology. What so, is that? So, you know what? I have, to, I have to be honest. When I applied for the job, I had to look it up myself, kind of like, hmm. Um, so, histo technologists are the people that, when you have a biopsy done, will prepare the slides for review by the pathologist. 
So they work um, with a lot of different, um, in a lot of different types of facilities that work in hospitals, private labs, uh, public labs, do, uh, they'll do research. Some of them were doing research on the COVID vaccine. Um, so they're, they're across a lot of the different sectors of employment. Uh, okay. And uh, I... generally, um, certification is not necessarily a requirement for the position. Not all states require individuals to be certified, but that's a position that we're pushing, uh, obviously, uh, as certification okay. helps to pr uh, make the organization stronger and uh, makes the members uh, be recognized more as a profession because of that. So I love the uh, the banner on uh, your site. It's like a, a, a microscope slide. Yeah, that's, that's exactly <laughs> You know what, your audience, don't you? Yeah, that, and actually we, ha we have every year, uh, it's called the Art of the Stain Contest. And we ask people to submit stains and then we use those in our marketing um, pieces. Wow. So it relates back to that's, you know, what they're It's using. oddly beautiful. Yeah, okay. And, and how many, how many uh, members do you have? So we have right now, we have about 28 members, which is a drop um, from uh, prior years. We were uh, over 3,000 before COVID hit, and now we're at about 2,800. Okay. Professional society, primarily focused in the U.S., although we do have members overseas as well. All right. And then uh, Tamika. You with us, Tamika? I don't want to bother people that are just listening in. Like, Tamika, don't answer if you're just listening in or not, <laughs> or not listening. Hello, everyone. Oh, there you are. I am here, um, and I plan to listen in. But let me, literally, while while you all were, I ran to throw a hat on and a shirt on <laughs> because it's been one of those days that I was in my pajamas all day long trying to. Knock Tamika, out are you implying that you weren't you weren't wearing a shirt a few minutes ago? Pajama shirt. Oh, okay. <laughs> I there's I had, there's I nothing before. wrong with that, and it's far better than what I was implying. <laughs> so I said, let me run and throw. Can a we shirt edit on. that out, by the way? <laughs> oh, it's being recorded. It is, isn't it? Oh, oh yeah, Tamika definitely put on a shirt for the recording. All right. And I, and <laughs> Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Tamika Brown. I work for the Alliance for Academic Internal Medicine in uh, Alexandria, Virginia. And I have been with the Alliance for a year, last month made a year, the member engagement manager um, for the Alliance. I've been in association management for about 12 years now in various capacities pretty much in the membership space. And um, at the Alliance, I manage the engagement programs. Um, and we have three currently, the mentoring program, the ambassadors program, and a recognition program, which is the awards um, program. So I am um, knee deep in the awards program as we're currently speaking and uh, writing bios for 17 of our award recipients and that is a task that mm. um i would love to pass on to someone else how many members do you have so the way the alliance is set up the members are the associations which are founding members of internal medicine and so there are five but when we look at all of the bodies that are within those five associations is 12,000 plus, maybe about 12,5. Okay. That's interesting. So it, it's almost like an AM, AMC. Is that accurate yeah. or not really? The Alliance? Yeah, kind of. Yes. Yes. It's a collection and it's all managed yes. under one entity, right? Yes. And we're that entity. Yep. You have five different brands or is it one brand? It's still one brand. Oh, that makes it easier. Yeah, cool. It's one brand. Yeah. So this is really, um, uh, and and for I I don't for the we were talking Kelly and I were talking before and Jay uh, Kelly's with High Road HR. Um, if you don't know High Road, it's a great communications um, technology platform uh, and a, a company. They the consultancy and they have technologies that they bring in. Uh, so this is I'm I'm really excited. Uh, that you guys are here because uh, 
I, I don't think I was expecting such a targeted group of people to be here, meaning like membership and marketing. That's awesome. Like this is this is awesome. You guys are exactly the people I want to hear from and and converse with uh, or collab with. That's a word I heard last night in the TV show I like to watch, Billions. You guys ever watch Billions? No. Yeah. Some guy said, why don't we sit down and collab? Anyway, <laughs> he's from Texas. So I, I, let me introduce myself and then let me set the foundation for the conversation. And, and by the way, I'm not offended if anybody just is doing other things. If you got email, you want to check. I understand this is kind of a check-in and chat sort of thing. So by all means, don't, don't, you're not offending me if you, if your screen goes black for a minute uh, or for the rest of the time. Um, I'm Dave Will. I am take great pride in being an entrepreneur, specifically in the association space. I've been working with associations for like 16 years. I want to say I start, I got fired from my job 20 years ago and I started a company and we fit, like meandered and found our way into the association space, which was a just a phenomenal discovery. Like it was discovering a new land, um, as an entrepreneur and it was, it's beautiful. Uh, and we, over a period of time, we got to know a lot of people and we got to know like Jay, for instance, I've known Jay a very long time. Um, I don't know how or when we met, you worked for, you worked, you worked for Personify a long time Personify, ago, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe that's how we got to know each other, but I've known Jay quite a while. And, and every now and then we get into these conversations, we see each other at conferences. Uh, and, and so I have a lot of those relationships, but we also learned in, in the company that I was building uh, uh, several years ago, we learned a lot of the problems and, um, you know, what associations do really well and what associations don't do so well. And one of the things I like to tap into, generally speaking, this could be offensive. I'm going to say it anyway. Associations are, tend to be a little bit behind the curve in their use of technology. Is that fair to say? Oh, yes. I mean, I, I, Freshta, no, who came from industry? Freshta, right? I, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, was, you're probably it was a hard observing adjustment. That. Yeah. It was a hard adjustment because my, um, right before coming here, I worked at a startup and uh, it was quite a change of pace. So, I, yeah. I worked in tech for about four years. But, you know, what I'll say is like, I was brought in for that reason, because our CEO realized we needed help. And so it was myself and my boss, who's our chief growth officer, who also came from private industry. They're like, you got to help us. So, yeah, Jamie made a good point in the chat and maybe slightly faster to pick up on it than government. You're right. You're right. You're definitely not government. <laughs> <laughs> but the other thing about associations, I think that's interesting is, is, uh, and this is, you know, another characteristic, especially as compared to the tech startup world is decisions are made by committees, groups yeah. of people, oftentimes are the ones making decisions all the way down to relatively small financial decisions are still made by groups of people, which if you know how committees work or boards work, generally speaking, the most conservative decision is going to, is, is the one that's going to take hold. And as a result, uh, uh, risks are rarely taken. And as a result, leaps of innovation are rarely achieved, generally speaking. Now, you, you could debate that, I, I think. But um, I think that's kind of an interesting characteristic of the association space. But I like that about the association space because associations look outside of their entity for innovation. They look outside of their entity for creativity. And so that's something that I've tapped into. And our, my first company was called Peach New Media, a learning management system uh, that uh, Freestone is the product. And Freestone is now owned by, sold that back in 2015 to, um, at the time it was Billa, uh, which was then acquired by Community Brands. So Freestone is one of the learning management systems now in Community Brands. I'm very proud of that. Um, but since then, I... I started PropFuel with a couple other people from uh, my last company that also understand associations inside and out. And we've built this, uh, what we refer to as a member, um, a member engagement uh, or communications platform. 
you know, so it's, it's, uh, you know, Jay, I said, I wasn't going to uh, share slides, but I may actually change my mind on that. At some point I might jump in and talk a little bit or, or give this introduction, but it's a conversational member engagement platform. That's what, that's what we're trying to encourage now. And we're always changing the language. We used to say contextual engagement. You know, what is the context between you and the person that you're speaking with? But where we're leaning towards now is this conversational member engagement. And so if I could, let me explain the foundation of, I think, why Jay invited me here and what I'd like to challenge us with in this conversation. And, and I think there's a problem in our space. And the problem is that in membership and marketing, specifically in the way we communicate with our members, um, there's lots of members, like, I mean, uh, 16,000, 2,800, 12,500. I mean, you guys, there's a lot of members. You cannot talk to them on the phone every day. You cannot hold a conference and expect to engage each one of them on a regular basis. So what we do is we end up shooting out emails to them all the time. And so we're, we're sending them the stuff that we think is important for them to see. And we're sending them emails, getting them to sign up for um, conferences, to sign up for educational events, webinars, to buy, get, sign up for a certification. We're talking to our members as if we're selling them shoes, right? We're talking to them as if we're Zappos. And everybody talks about, hey, be more like Netflix, be more like the subscription model. Cool in business model, but not cool in the way that we're engaging members. You cannot engage members of an association the way we're engaging uh, customers of Netflix or Prime or, any, or Zappos for that matter. You're not selling shoes, what you're selling is a connection in the industry, right? You're, you're selling more than anything. You're selling um, this, uh, uh, it's, you're not selling anything actually. You're creating an environment for people to get more connected with the industry. Yet, we still treat it like we're selling shoes. We put them into this funnel, we process them based on their clicks and based on their opens and it's a major, major problem. Then we all wonder, well, how come they're not engaged? So that's the problem I think that, that we're faced with. You guys, you know your memberships. You know, generally speaking, what the needs are in your membership, right? You know that generally speaking, why people join, generally speaking, um, uh, 28% join for the educational content, 32% join for the magazine because we have a great publication. Uh, you know how to break it down. 20% join for the networking. And you know, so you break it down, you know exactly because you've done surveys and you've talked to people. And so you know what the membership needs. But you don't know, you don't know what Cindy needs. You don't know what Jamie needs. If you have five different segments and even if one of your segments is a very small segment of, of people, or if, if one, one of the segments represents half of your membership, I still don't know what Jamie needs. I might be able to guess, oh, there's a 50% chance Jamie falls in this category. There's an 18% chance she falls in here. So when I'm communicating to Jamie, along with 10,000 other people, I'm kind of guessing and if I'm not guessing, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a ton of shit in the, in the email that's going out to them. Like, that's, that's what's happening. Forgive me if my language offends you. <laughs> There'll probably be a few more of those in, along the way. Unless somebody says right now, like, I don't like bad language. It makes me uncomfortable. Okay. So th that's, the, but that's the problem in the industry is we're talking to segments of people. Nobody here is a segment. You guys are all individuals and individual needs and individual problems. And those problems are changing a lot over the course of the year. And you bounce back and forth between problems, especially Jay. Jay's got lots of problems. And, but, and constantly bouncing back and forth between these problems, right? So, uh, so anyway, so the question then is how do we engage with people? And what we're proposing is that 
can I, you know what, Jay, I lied. I want to, I really want to show a couple slides because I think, um, and, and so these are, I'm not very organized in my, um, in how I'm going to present this because I literally did not prepare these, but these are from another deck that I had open on my computer. Is that all right? Because I think this will. Absolutely. Whole... You should have rights to, to do it as well. There we go. Got it. So, so this is, um, we're actually coincidentally going out for funding in the next few months. And so we're in the process of trying to figure out how we communicate this. And this is something I'm working on right now, which is why, um, uh, why I think this is relevant. And I, th I think it might be better to walk you through this. So I'm, I'm not going to worry about turning this like full screen. I'm just going to walk it through like I'm sharing my screen with you right now. And so here's that problem that I communicated. We're, we're trying to create these meaningful connections, but we're just sending stuff out to people. And so you've got the, the these emails that are powered by guesswork, right? We're guessing where Jamie fits into the mix. But what we're doing at PropFuel, and forgive me if, if I'm making this sound like a like a sales pitch. It is probably 20% a sales pitch, but 80% just pure passion for wanting to improve the way associations are communicating with their members. The methodology of asking questions via email and getting people to engage with you and creating a, a conversation, it's powered by the voice of the member. It's a way of engaging people and giving them an opportunity to talk back. And we do that by creating this two-way dialogue as opposed to one-way emails. You know, these emails, I, I, I think you've all received those emails where the email address it comes from is literally do not reply. They get, can you imagine an association? I don't, I don't know of any associations that. Usually it comes from membership or info or something like that. Rarely does it come from like like a particular person rarely really? sometimes it does oh yeah I, I i can tell you in our client base i'm constantly trying to get people to to make these emails come from a person as opposed to from membership but i i mean the fact that some industries even send out emails to say do not reply just goes to show that they don't want to hear from you or they don't have the mechanism to manage hearing from you. So that's one of the things we're trying to solve in this problem. We, we really want the ability for people to talk to us. That requires the ability for this two-way engagement. And then this idea of posting stuff, just constantly posting stuff onto the internet, uh, onto the email, and then completely unrelated stuff everywhere else, what we're hoping to do is reach people through a bunch of different mediums. And that's what the dynamic element means is being able to, to leverage all these different elements of your communication to connect with people. And so um, the, the idea is, I'm, I'm gonna skip over some of the details of the platform. One, one thing I do wanna show, let me see, I think I got another one here. Um, there's this ask, capture, act, um, and again, forgive me for jumping all around. Here we go. This is what I wanted to show you. So this is the methodology we use. Ask, capture, act. And the idea is that we're sending out these emails with a question that people answer right in the email. It's not a survey. It, it, I, oftentimes it's confused for surveys because we're asking a question, right? And what do surveys do? They ask questions. A survey base is usually several questions and you send it out over email with the hopes of getting people involved and it says, take our survey and you go take the survey and you submit it and that's the end of it. Usually it probably ends up, somebody reads it, like one of you guys, a membership person reads it and like, oh, that's interesting. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Cool. Half of our membership likes certifications, 13% likes this. Cool. Still don't know what Jamie wants. Unless I'm literally going line by line in that survey and looking what people want and then acting on it individually. So we're asking these questions, we capture the insight in the individual level. And then based on the individual response, we take these actions to, to, to engage. So like examples are like, we'll send out these emails. In this scenario, it's like, uh, hey, do you know your membership lapsed? Like really, really, really simple question, but we're giving them a chance to tell us yes or no. And then based on their answer, we might lead them to another action. That's just one example of one step in a multi-step process. 
I, I'm a member of ASAE, of course, and, and um, I just went to do something that required my membership. Um, and I tried to log in and it said that my membership had expired. I'm like, what? So I go to look and it turns out it expired in October. This is what last week. It expired in October. I had no idea. So ASA is a client of ours. They're actually now <laughs> implementing a lapsed member engagement campaign where lapsed members get a question very similar to this. Their question is, are you planning to renew your membership? Now, had I received an email from ASAE, like this one right here, it says, are you planning to renew your membership? The options being, yeah, uh, undecided or no. You know, I would have put, yeah. And then it would have led me to the place where I can renew my membership. I had no idea my membership had even lapsed. Are they sending me emails? Maybe, probably. I'm just deleting them because I've been trained to delete ASA emails. Anyway, all these different places where you can use this philosophy, which you guys are familiar with, a new member onboarding, lapsed member, um, uh, uh, dormant members, uh, uh, member acquisition. Oh, yeah, that's something I want to show you too. So member acquisition, we did this A-B test, traditional marketing, like email marketing. This just this was just this week we got the results in. We've been working with this one prospect for 90 days. It's an A-B test, traditional marketing, and the the uh, this this uh, conversational engagement methodology, right? The idea of creating a dialogue, trying to get as close to this one-to-one -one connection with people as we can, and it doubled the results across the board. It so. That's why, Jay, I was saying how passionate I am about this because it just works. Like if we turn on this engine, whether you're using prop fuel or not, I, it doesn't matter. I don't know how you do it without using prop fuel, without like tripling your staff. I, so, and that's why we built the platform. I don't know how you do it without this, but if you can figure out a way to create these one-to-one -one connections with your members, you're going to double your typical results. And we did not know that we never, we didn't have any evidence of that until just this week. Now the evidence is standing there strong and clear. So that's the foundation of what I stand on. And that is we're communicating with our members wrong. We're communicating them to like we're selling shoes. We're communicating with them like we're, we're talking at them most of the time, hoping that we guessed right on the things that they might be interested in. And, and, and we send them twice as many emails as we probably should because we have to, because we have so much stuff to send them. As opposed to asking a question and based on the answer, giving them something really, really relevant to what they need. So anyway, that's, that's, um, that's the foundation of who I am, what Propule does. That's the epiphany that we've had on this space in terms of membership and member engagement. And, uh, I'd love to take this in any direction you want. We could talk about new... Oh, uh, there was a couple things I wrote down. Webinar versus chat. So here's a great example. Webinar, Jay and I, if this was a webinar, Jay and I would have our screens here and Jay and I would be having this conversation. You guys would be listening, doing your emails and stuff, right? You Guarantee it, Jamie. You're, you would be doing your emails. I guarantee it. Cindy, you wouldn't be smiling there because you know nobody would be looking at you. You'd be like, I'm oh my God. This... responding to Jay's chat in the chat box. Which <laughs> That's fair. But I, I am a fair, I'm a good multitasker. <laughs> but you're engaged, right? I don't care if it's a chat or listening to me. I'm rambling now. If you could turn me to 1.5 speed, you probably would. But the, you're engaged. Whereas if Jay and I were in a webinar talk, talking at you, it'd be less engagement. Less, maybe you'd be listening to some of it or participate with less engagement. And so that's the, that's the comparison to traditional marketing or traditional communications versus what I consider to be conversational member engagement, which is this idea of trying to get to that level of one-to-one -one connection. And in order to do that with 16,000, 10,000, 2,800 members, the 12, 12, 5, the way, the way you get to that is through automation. You have to. That doesn't mean eliminate the human. All that means is, is, uh, is automating the processes so that Cindy knows who to talk to, when to talk to them, and what to talk to them about. Otherwise, you're kind of left guessing again as to who needs help or one of your members is finally screaming at you because they're so livid about something. 
So anyway, I could give you example after example. Let's talk about renewals for a second, Cindy. Um, I, I think it's really interesting when, in a lot of associations do this, when, when they have a, a, a surge of membership related to a conference because they're offering a discount in the membership or membership comes free with the conference. They're hoping that they can kind of lure you in through, and that's not an evil thing. I made it sound evil. Lure you in through this mm-hmm. membership. But there's, if it's a good tactic, but the problem is usually people are there for the conference and then they don't give a shit about anything else. So the trick then is in year one of their membership to really show them the value. And the way you show somebody the value is you find out what's important to them. You find out what their needs are. And then you can respond to that with something really, really valuable. Like Cindy, I could look at you. I could see you might like flowers. You might like art. You like food, um, baskets, and jars. Uh, You might like knitting based on your sweater. Or I could just say, Cindy, what's what's something you like to do? Tell me about a hobby of yours. Actually, answer the question for me. What's something you like to do in your free time? So oh, I'm an avid reader. I love to read mystery books, especially. Uh, what? What? Who's your? Who's like the number one author? Like, what are you reading right now? So I like. Um, well, I also noticed that a lot of my authors are older women that are tending to die off. So that's a problem. I have to cultivate <laughs> younger folks. Uh, you know, just like associations have to cultivate younger folks. Um, I like Mary Higgins Clark. I like Lisa Scoline, uh, Lisa Gardner. Uh, they're some of my favorites. So. And older women are always dying off. You yeah. Know what I mean, Jen? <laughs> and God, older men aren't. <laughs> so so I, I said so many stupid jokes. So, Cindy, I, I've been reading a lot of, speaking of older women, I, I've been reading a lot of Anne Rand. And uh, she talk about, like, an entrepreneur's mind. It's just awesome. So what I did there with Cindy, not that, I, and I'm sincerely interested. I could keep talking to you, Cindy, about this. Um, but what I did there with Cindy is I didn't just send Cindy a note saying, Cindy, I see you like flowers and food. That is a fridge behind you, right? Uh, it's actually my file cabinet. But See I do like, food. like, don't worry, I'd like food too. Yes, I do. no, but that would have been wrong. Well, okay, maybe I would have gotten lucky. And she does like, well, most people like food, 53% of everybody I talk to eats. So, <laughs> but, but I could have, I could have guessed, you know, flowers and art. So we're going to send her some information about flowers and art, or even worse. I'm looking in this whole group, they're all women, except for Jay and me. So, therefore, I uh, we should talk about clothing because women all like clothing, right? So maybe I'm accurate. Okay. No. I would have been good with fresh for Reshta. But you know, I just don't know. I'm, I'm wearing guessing. a hoodie. Just if you can't see, I'm wearing a hoodie. But what I, I did clothes. with Cindy is I asked her what she likes. She likes books, and we had a nice short conversation about books. Now, Cindy and I, if we see each other at a conference, are probably more likely to have a connection than with somebody th- that is sitting here watching this in a webinar. That's the value of, of um, this, this idea of, of conversational member engagement. All right, and, and so if you can do that with your renewal process, hey, why are you hesitating to renew? What's what looking back on your membership, what was most valuable to you? And multiple choice is fine. It doesn't all have to be open ended. Open ended is hard to answer. It takes time and effort. Multiple choice is fine. Generally, you know what the answers are going to be. You just want to know what the answer is for Cindy. So, you know, there's all kinds of questions in the renewal process, the acquisition process of bringing new members on on board. What what? What is the number one issue in your in your day to day operations right now? What is what is something in our industry you you're really concerned about? Um, and and based on how they answer, you lead them to something that is only you guys can provide. So by the way, you can get access to this if you just join our membership. So those are two sides of the spectrum from member acquisition to member renewal. And that's I always wondered how radio talk show hosts could just talk and talk and talk. And here we are 43 minutes into this and I haven't let anybody else say a word. So I think I just figured it out. You just find something you're passionate about. (laughs) I have a question. I'm going to stop talking. Yeah. Yeah. So 
our association, um, I mean, we've taken a little bit of a, of a dip in terms of renewals and um, acquisitions, <clears throat> but we've actually had pretty strong numbers. I mean, our renewals, I don't know what the current rate is, but it was usually in the 90 to 95%. Um, and I forget off the top of my head, our acquisitions. What is the, NIGP again? Is the uh, Institute for Public Procurement. Okay. So we've got about 3,000 agencies that are members and then um, 16,000 members overall. Okay. So there are some agencies that may have 50, 100, 200, 300 members um, that join NIGP. And I'm actually working with my colleague in membership and we've been updating our um, both our renewal and our new member messaging. So this is a really great topic for me to, this, this is really, really helpful for me, um, very timely. One of the issues um, that I'm trying to get a better understanding of is I think there are a lot of our members who simply don't know that they're members and they don't know what the benefits of their membership are. Because yeah. you may have, you know, an agency that has 300 members and we, the rep signs up these 300 individuals to become NIGP members, but that process to get that information to them, I don't know what happened. So I, so there's, there's a huge opportunity for us to let these people know hey, you're NIGP members and you get, do you know, you get these like awesome benefits, right? You get reduced this and free access to that, et cetera. Can you talk to me a little bit about like onboarding when you've got new members? So you've acquired oh God, them. Totally, yes. And now like, how do you get them to actually use the services? Because that's the only way you're gonna get them to see the full value of their membership. All right. So uh, instead of searching for this now, email me if you want this. I'm going to, we have a case study that we just did like two weeks ago with ASAE. They've been using PropFuel for like a year that shows how they do new member onboarding, mm -hmm. totally for the intent of educating members as to the value of ASAE, starting with ask, capture input, and then offer a response. So email me if you're interested and I'll send this to you, dave at propfuel.com and I'll, I'll send you the link for the ASAE case study. Um, uh, and I could also show you now, uh, I'd rather not waste that time. We only have a few more minutes left. Most organizations, uh, and ASAE did this too in the beginning, will you join? And they send you this massive list uh, with, and I've counted some of these emails. One I counted just out of the blue. It's not the highest, just one I counted 50 links, five zero links for me to click on, not including the social media at the bottom. 50 things I could have clicked on. They mm -hmm. say with a good sales call to action, you should have one thing for them to click on. Now, the, granted, an association is not selling shoes, so they don't need one click, but 50? I'm not going to go through 50 things and go through that filter. So I'm more likely just to say, you know, what, I don't have time for this general information. Now, if ASA were to ask me, what is my, why did I join? Why did you join ASAE? A few different options based on how I click. Now they're actually sending me something relevant to how I ask. Next question might be something related to how I like to learn or how do I see myself among my peers? For me, I'd probably choose technology with is the peers or, or marketing and membership is where I see myself because I love talking to you guys about this stuff from a, so I, the, the membership marketing, maybe I click there and then I say, see all the membership marketing related stuff, relevant stuff. So that's, that's one thing I'll comment on. Um, yeah. So I, I think oftentimes we're talking at our members and dumping a bunch of stuff in their laps when we don't even know what it is they want. Here's, here's the other comment I want to make about um, new members. New members join for the benefits, but they stay for the people. Like that's, that, that's a, I don't know that I can prove that, but I, I'm pretty sure based on a lot of the organizations I've talked to, that's the sentiment yeah. is that people join for the benefits and they stay for the people. So you have one year 
to help people make those connections, either with the organization or with their peers. You have one year to make that happen. Your questions over the course of that first year, your onboarding process, better be getting them connected with people so that they come back for a second year. Because if the if you're just trying to give them that 10% discount on the hotel chain that for when they travel, now all of a sudden it's just a calculation. Am I saving enough on my travel to warrant the $350 I pay for membership or whatever? So um, I think we put way too much emphasis on the discounts uh, rather than what it is people really need. So those are the two things I would say is, um, I don't know if that helps, but if you send me, and, and in, well, I'll go one step further. If you want to get into a more in-depth conversation, typically the way will work. And again, this forgive me if I'm selling right now. I am a little bit, but. No, um, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I joined. I, I was on another call yesterday because we're um, actually, I'm planning for my next fiscal year. We operate on a July through June time period. So I'm looking to see what is my roadmap look like for next year. We just launched a new website. Um, we rebranded this past year. There's a whole lot more that we're going to do with our website, but there's like some fundamental things that we need to try to solve for as an organization. So um, I'm going to follow up with you, but I'd like to set up an, a follow-up meeting with some of my other colleagues for you to do a demo for us. See that's what I was going to say. Oh, we have, yeah. So we just did a demo day today, like literally two hours ago, um, at like a demo a group demo. Um, but I, and I found the link. Here's the link for the ASA case study. I just put it into the chat. Um, you're all welcome to grab that. Uh, in terms of a demo, by all means, uh, you re reach out to me over email uh, again, Dave at propfuel.com, and I'll I'm going to connect you with Ryan Graham. Um, and yeah, that that sounds awesome. That's good. Oh, cool. I uh, yeah, I could keep talking. One fifty one, Jay. We did pretty well. So, so let, let me let me do this. Let me um, <clears throat> let me just basically give everybody kind of a wrap up real quick. And, um, and, and that way, if somebody has to slip off, they don't feel like they're cutting out early, but they, if people want to stick around for uh, nine or 10 more minutes, they can do that as well. So um, the sessions continue tomorrow. Um, again, they're all at 1 p.m. I'll put it in the chat what the topic is for that one. The next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, again at 1 p.m. Um, this has been so great. I love, Dave, that you uh, pointed out the difference in the video chat versus the Did you say you love me? <laughs> that's like, so I nice i love dave here. and i love you jay i didn't this is didn't pause <laughs> there it was there's a long no. pause there i'm starting yeah. to think you just said i love you dave <laughs> or no i love dave you didn't say you. okay anyway go hey, on no, what do you love no, about mustard um anyway um you know the idea behind the video chat right was exactly that was exactly what you pointed to is that i wanted people connection to be aged right and connected and yeah. not just being talked to. So yeah, how do we foster more of that? That's, that's great, love the comments. I wish more people could have benefited from this session. No, that's, uh, you know what, the more people, the harder it is to connect, right? Yeah. So, um, hey, I just saved that chat because I didn't get to read it all. Where does it go when I save it? I, I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm going to say, here, I got, I got it. It's in saved to my computer. I got it. Yeah, now. it goes on your computer, Dave. You'll find it, um, at least when I've saved chats before, it pops up on your computer. All right. All right, cool. File, save chat. I got it now. Cool. Hey, this was fun listening to me. <laughs> I'm such a dink, as my wife would say. I'm such a dink. He's all mine. That's what she would say. Yeah, I, I Thank sincerely, Jay, I appreciate this because I really enjoy the, bye, I really enjoy this topic. And, and I, I feel like it's a bit of a movement now to help people see the light that we've got to stop selling shoes. We just got to, we got to get more into creating stronger connections with members and you cannot do it with the existing technology. Thank you so much, Jay. Absolutely. Everybody have a great afternoon. Um, let, let us know if you can be of service. I just put my email address in there if anybody has any. Oh, yeah. I'll put mine in. Dave schedule. at Prop Fuel. There we go. I love you, Jay. <laughs>
Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye, everybody. Have a great day. That was fun, man. Let me uh, let me pause or stop the recording.